Uh, welcome to the Scalato Parent Briefings. These are really short 30-minute sessions where we try and cover topics of interest to parents. And the first one we're going to talk about today is how to make good use of the show, which is quite an interesting question, really, because uh, many people will not have been to a show like this before. So I thought just to kick things off, I'd ask you to put your hand up if you've been to a school show here before. Okay, so about six or seven people in the audience and a lot of people who haven't been to a show like this before. Uh, yep, do you want to put your hand up if you haven't been to a school show before? Great, okay, so that, that tells us why we're all sat here, doesn't it? Um, and I've got a really fantastic uh, panel to help uh, discuss this question. So here I've got uh, Jesse, who's headmaster of Sevenoaks, and Anthony, who's headmaster of Stowe. Um, and I'm going to ask them just to, just to start off by telling us whether they've ever been to anything at all like this when trying to make a decision. Uh, good morning, everyone. Really, really nice to see you. Thanks, thanks for showing up on a beautiful November's morning. Um, have I ever? Been, I, I've been I've been to this show quite a number of times, but usually as a speaker and an exhibitor. I, I have to confess uh, that when I was looking for schools for my own children. I, I didn't go to a show like this, but I think it's a brilliant opportunity because in, in this one big tent, you've got hundreds of schools. You've got so many schools represented here from all over the United Kingdom. Day schools, boarding schools, single sets, co-ed, selective, non-selective, specialist schools in music, art, drama. Um, so a actually, I, I'm beginning to regret the fact that I didn't come to a thing like this because it would have made the whole selection process a lot easier. So over to you. Jesse, um, if, if you were coming here as a parent, uh, what would you do? I'm, um, I'm originally from Detroit. And if you know about Detroit, we're the home of Ford and General Motors. And there's a really amazing car show every year in Detroit. And growing up, I used to go to this car show, and I'd go around and look at all the different cars, and then you kind of come away with a short list of cars that you might like to go test drive or learn more about. And I think, as Anthony just said, this is a really unique opportunity, this show. It's the only show of its kind that has this many schools in one place in the UK. And so I, I would recommend that you kind of go around and look at a lot of the different stalls and try to get an idea of, you know, work out. And hopefully you have some idea what you want, but it's okay if you don't. Do you want day or boarding? Do you want single-sex co-ed? What sort of co-curricular? What sort of facilities? Do you want to be in London or outside of London? Um, all these different questions. Kind of go around and get a sense. And, and I would recommend that by the end of today, you come away with a kind of short list of cars that you want to go test drive, and if running with that analogy. So, I mean, and by that, schools that you want to go visit, because I do think to really get to know a school, you need to visit it in person and go on a tour and meet some of the students. But today's a great opportunity to kind of create that kind of list of what schools you might like to see. Uh, I'd like to pick up a different metaphor, but stick with Detroit. So Detroit is also the home of Tamla Motown. So you, we could have... Um, uh, fans of the Supremes, or you might want to go down to Memphis and meet Elvis, or you might be more interested in uh, uh, a bluesy grass root sound and go down to Louisiana. Um, so this is, a, this is your chance to work out what your uh, template is. What, 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 what do you want to sample? Um, can we think of any other analogies for Detroit? Um, what a great city. It's got one of the greatest modern art galleries in America. Uh, spot the cultural historian. The, uh, so, um, Anthony has been to masses and masses of school shows uh, as an exhibitor and speaker. What kind of questions do parents tend to ask you when they, when they come and talk to you? And, and perhaps also, what do you wish they would ask you? So, um, the, the first thing is, um, I, I, so my, ba my background is, um, uh, I used to work in London, I used to work at, at a school called St. Paul's, which is one of the, the most selective and uh, high-powered academic intellectual uh, powerhouses in, in London. Um, and then I went to work at, in, in a place called Tunbridge, which is only about 35 minutes from London by, by train. Uh, I'm now working at, at Stowe, which is one and a half hours away by, by car. And, and the thing to, to remember about choosing schools is um, don't, don't be fooled by glossy brochures. 
Um, don't, be, don't be fooled by facilities. Don't be fooled by uh, the uh, league tables. Um, you, you have to be careful not to compare apples and oranges, sheep and goats. Um, your child is absolutely unique and you need to go deeper. And so instead of being looking, being bamboozled a bit by, by the league tables and fantastic results, um, ask about value added. What does the school do for the child? Don't, 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 ask, don't let the head or the admissions or the registrar um, keep on asking you what your child can do for the school. It's what can the school do for your child. So those, those are some of the questions. Um, and, and ask the head about the vision. What, what is your vision for the school? It's so interesting that when you talk to educational leaders, um, they don't have a vision. You know, they want to keep the school full. They want to do well in exams. They want to compete in sport and drama and music. But, but what about character education? What are you going to do to, to make a child resilient or conscientious or um, have a sense of decency and know the difference between right and wrong? I think those are the more fundamental, more interesting philosophical questions that you should be asking. Um, and, and put the head on the spot. I'll ask the head, um, when did you last expel a child and what for? Those are the questions we really don't like being asked. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesse, I was going to ask you a, a similar question, really. Uh, what questions would you ask a school? I'm, I'm quite obsessed right now with um, building off what Anthony just said with what schools do beyond the academic and the co-curricular. So I'm talking about character education or skills education. If you think about what's going to make someone employable, your son and daughter employable or happy or successful in life, it's actually not their exam results. Um, it, it's who they are as a person. It's the skills that they will develop in schools, critical thinking, problem solving, resilience, grit, communication. So what are all those things and how do schools develop them? So I would, I would ask heads or ask admissions people about that. You know, what, what's, cause a lot of, a lot of the schools here are going to have many things in common. They're going to have great facilities. They're going to have great co-curricular programs. In fact, one of the great things about independent schools in this country is that they haven't sold off their playing fields and they still invest in the arts. So a lot of the schools are going to have things in common here. So try to, try to, work, out, try to work out different things, what, what's different between the schools and what else they're doing. I also think that it's... Um, I also think when you, when you come to a show like this and you're going around and talking to different people, you will have your own preconceptions. So you might think, I really want single sex. So go to a co-educational school and say, what do you think is good about co-ed? Try, try to come away today learning something new. Go to a school and try to find a head and say, why do you still do GCSEs? Because I hear GCSEs are criticized a lot. What, what do you think about GCSE? Kind of, um, go to a school that teaches A-level and go to a school that does IB in the sixth form and say, can you tell me the difference between international baccalaureate and A-level? So I would challenge you to do that. Go around and try to ask questions and challenge your own assumptions. Try to come away and, and having had a conversation where someone's made you think differently. Okay, now I'm just going to do a, a bit of a plug for some of the material that we give you when you come in um, and what we hope you do with it because I, I think people often don't really use these things as well as they could. So you, you should all have got one of these, okay, which is your show guide. That's got like listings for, each, for all the schools that are exhibiting here today. And at the front is this very handy table. And what I suggest you do, that, what that does is have like a dot around like the ages that the, children, that the schools do, what qualifications they teach, whether they have any special uh, learning difficulty support, uh, and, and the location. And to start with, I would re really recommend that you kind of highlight the schools that you think you'd like to see. So spending a bit of time with a, with a pen or a highlighter or a pencil, and just like giving yourself a long list of schools. At the back, you can, you've got this floor plan where you can find them. And that kind of just means you spend a bit less time walking around the floor. It's kind of exhausting, actually. It's like being at a, at a museum. You know, you, there really is like show exhaustion. About, some people get it about half an hour in. Other people have a kind of like better stamina for this sort of thing. Um, and then this is the talks program. 
So if you want to get particular information about a certain topic, I recommend that you kind of go through this and highlight the talks that you think you'd like to hear as well. So once you've done that and you've kind of got yourself a long list at the show, should you then challenge yourself to expand that list in any way? What do you reckon? Um, I, yeah, exactly. I think uh, get, go with an open mind and um, get, get a selection of, of schools, but don't limit yourself to, to London day schools. Have a look at some of the boarding schools. Um, we, we've changed our model. We used to be full boarding. Uh, we're now weekly boarding. Uh, we've expanded our day option. The weekly boarding, it, it, it really is not that difficult to get to and from London to Stowe. It, it, it's an hour and a half. By, by car, uh, 35 minutes from Euston up to Milton Keynes and then 20 minutes from Milton Keynes to, to the school. So um, ha have, have, have a look at the different, different offers. Um, if you've got super talented children, have a look at the bursaries and the scholarship programs. A lot of schools are doing what we're doing. We, we've just launched something called Change 100. We, we're creating an endowment for 100 fully funded children to come to the school, um, which is on top of our scholarship program. So we, we're, we're trying to create this um, social mobility program with an endowment which is all about encouraging children from backgrounds that would not normally look at independent schools to send their children. So those are, the, those are things that you... So some people would think, Stowe is not for me, it's a traditional... Um, boarding school, it's uh, set in a ducal palace with amazing landscape gardens, but it isn't the sort of school that I would be looking at. And I think, again, change your preconceptions, because some of these schools have changed quite dramatically in the last 10 years. Jesse, would, would you add any wild cards? <laughs> I, I, I just think that's a great point. Schools have changed dramatically, and what... Um, one thing I always find amusing is some of our, some of our former students, some old Sanokians we call them, who came to Seven Oaks, who came to the school 20, 25 years ago, they think they know the school really well, so they will be very definitive at a dinner party. Oh, I know about Seven Oaks, I went there, let me tell you, and actually, you went there a quarter of a century ago, it's a totally different place now. So I, I, do, I do think that's important to go and see schools and have kind of a fresh, don't necessarily think it's the same that it was a generation ago. Um, the other point I wanted to make, because I, I feel some people in the audience are, are looking really serious. Like you feel a weight of pressure today. You're at the independent school show. Education is really, really, really important. Your children are the most important thing in your lives and you're trying to think about their education. So I can see it now, some of you are smiling and acknowledging that. Um, I wanna take a little bit of the pressure out of this. I, I'm, I've gone through this myself. I have three daughters. I've got, so I'm, I'm there at an independent school. I, I went through this choice. They're currently at a prep school. And I had this wonderful day with my wife where we, we visited a couple of different prep schools just as I was moving to seven. Oaks to take over. We visited a couple of beautiful countryside prep schools with lovely playing fields and things. And we visited two, and I got in the car at the end of the day and I started laughing. And my, life's, my wife said, Why are you laughing? And I said, Do you like the Land Rover or do you like the Range Rover? And my point was we're choosing between some very, very high quality products. <laughs> and the independent schools here, as I've already said, they've got lots in common. They're, they're wonderful, they're wonderful kind of, I think, par again, part of the reason I think is great the independent sector exists in this country is it shows what education should be like at its best when it's properly funded. So I think kind of have a bit of enjoying today as well. Don't, don't be too stressed and kind of appreciate there are lots of good options out here. And actually, when you do end up making a choice, it will be the right choice for you and your family, and you will make it so. And then you'll have confirmation bias a couple years later, so it will be great in the end. Okay, now, just, just to kind of, like, put, put the stress back on for a second, I'm going to ask a question that is in a lot of parents' minds. Um, are parents and their children being judged by schools when they go and talk to them? Um, I, 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 no. Um, <laughs> all, all of us... <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, the the um, schools schools are essentially educational businesses. Um, this is a, there's a transaction. Um, some some of these schools that we're talking about are asking for really substantial sums of money. You can buy a small flat in Battersea for the equivalent sum of money that it costs to educate your child in a British boarding school. So this is you know, these are, and. and if you do the, the multiplier effect of two, three children, um, you're looking at a small townhouse 
in Clapham, Wandsworth. I'm, I'm keeping out of Kensington and Chelsea until the market falls out of the, the bottom falls out of the market next year. It won't, but, but you know, it, 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 is, it is a substantial sum of money. So you are the customers. Um, you have all the power. Um, we are trying to sell you a product. Now, Thomas Edison said that the greatest invention in the whole of creation is the mind of a child. So we, I'm beginning to sound like the child catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we need your children. Um, you know, this, is, this only works if you trust us to get it right. And I think what, what is the most, the reason I'm a teacher and not um, in finance or any other business is I love that alchemy in education where you get a child, um, I mean, we're now a group of schools, so we start at three, but I've, I've always taught from 13 to 18. And when you see a, a gawky, unprepossessing, um, inarticulate 13, 14-year-old blossoming and flourishing and thriving in a school and developing a whole raft of talents and dispositions and skills that sets them up for a world now of many jobs, not just one job, but a, a portfolio of careers um, where they can use different technologies, technologies which haven't yet been invented, and solve problems that we're only just beginning to think about. And I think that is the most exciting part of uh, a human life in terms of their developmental stage. The most influential time in your life is when you are turning from being a, 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 an adolescent into a young adult. And the values and the character that you have at that age will be the character and the values that you take forward into adulthood. So it, it really is you, the, the power is with you. You get to choose. We, you know, we try and do our best, but honestly, we, we are not judging you. I mean, who are we to judge you? This is really you judging us and saying, is this the right fit for me? Is this the right fit for my child? So there, there may be one or two very, very snooty schools, and I won't name them, although I might do in private. Um, but they're probably not for any of us in this room. Um, they're yeah. also probably not here today. Or oh, one or two of them might be. But the, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so we've got about 10 minutes left. So there's a chance to open it up to the floor to, uh, and ask us some questions about the, that are on your mind. Ellen? Sorry, Ellen. Hello, uh, my name is Stella. I was really wondering, uh, as you are boarding schools, what do you think is the right age for kids to move to the boarding school? I think it depends on the child. Um, one of, one of my daughters, who's eight, is just fascinated by boarding and would move into boarding right now if she could, which really upsets me because I quite like her at home in the evening and I still read to her at bedtime. Uh, uh, whereas uh, other students, you know, we, our boarding starts at 13 and most boarding schools in the UK for senior school boarding starts at 13, even if they do have an intake of day students below that. And students do come from around the world. Um, at Seven Oaks right now, we have students from 70 different nationalities. We have 70 different passports in our student body. So amongst our eight boarding houses, we have students from over 50 different countries. And um, yeah, they, they come and they, and they thrive and they become independent and um, self-reliant and they're used to traveling by themselves and looking after themselves. Talk to you. Yeah, great. Uh, uh, next uh, question at the back. Uh, we're, we're going to really yeah. try and move fast. So we can and and you, don't, you, you can just do a couple of nights of boarding. So you can start at 11, do a couple of nights of you know, occasional boarding, and then do full boarding at 13. So it, it, it doesn't need to be all or nothing. And there's a, um, there's a, uh, that question is being tackled at 11.30 on the Good Schools Guys stage. Oh, hi. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say to all parents who came here, by coming to this show, we managed um, a lot of scholarships without even paying education consultants. So thank you for that. But the question is, what's the difference between, when you're choosing a school, do we look at the IGCSE and the GCSE? I didn't know about IGCSE until my son went to Eton. 
And right now, I've got my second son, and we need to make a choice between IGCSE and GCSE. So what okay. is the difference between so, the two when choosing a school? So let's broaden the question slightly and say, you know, there are a lot of technical questions about things like qualifications. How can you use the show to help you answer those questions? Or can you? Um, but very quickly on IGCSEs, um, uh, the only difference between IGCSEs and GCSEs is the independent schools tend to use the IGCSEs um, for, for a variety of reasons. But in terms of um, the value of the qualification, it is identical. Um, there's a, the, the, the press try and stir this up a bit by saying that IGCSEs are easier. Uh, a few years ago, um, independent schools went to the IGCSEs because we thought they were more difficult. So it, 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 there isn't anything really in between them. Jess, I don't, would you agree with that? Totally agree. Does anybody else have a question? There was a hand up down here somewhere. Okay, I'm going to ask a quick one then. Um, what should be your next steps uh, when you get up now? Uh, let's throw in another analogy. Um, this show can be a bit like speed dating. So go around and you know, get a sense of the schools that you like and the schools that you'd like to get to know a bit better. Someone just cringed at that analogy. Sorry, you had a bad speed dating experience. Uh, but um, no, do go around and, and, and I, um, I mean, that was my kind of first piece of advice and that's probably um, one of my final piece of advice is try to get a sense of the schools that you want to learn more about and you really need to go visit a school. I, I don't, um, uh, uh, we, we've talked a little bit about exam results and facilities, but there's so much more to a school that's so much, it's a bit like when you're, um, you know, you, when you're looking for a house or something, you, you get a sense, you kind of know when you go in there. And I do believe there's kind of that intuitive sense when you visit a school, if you think that's the right thing. And of course, you're not choosing the school for you. You're choosing the school for your son or daughter. So make sure they get a chance to visit and they can yeah. feel that too. But, but Jesse there is talking about the next steps at the end of the day. I'm talking about literally right now. Answer the question. And, and, yeah, and the right now next step probably is to try, is to go and talk to a few schools. Like, it's quite easy to spend quite a lot of the day listening to talks. And, and, and the talks are really, really great. I mean, I put the program together. We want you to come to the talks, but you do need to talk to schools as well. Yeah, and, and if you can, I mean, there are quite a few headmasters around and head teachers. So if you can talk to the head, then find out what their, what their values are. What do, what do they feel is really important about, about their, their individual schools? Um, ask them about the skills and the competencies. So not just about the exams, but how, how do they encourage uh, innovation? How do they encourage um, complex problem solving? Do, do, they, do they see technology as something that is a threat to the world of employment because you know, AI, robotics, um, made seven million people redundant last year, but it also brings lots and lots of opportunities. How are they marrying creativity with technology? So uh, ask, ask the schools some really quite detailed questions to see if you can get a feel for a school because as, as Jesse says, um, you, you will know when you hit the right one. You will have that sense. Malcolm Gladwell, who's a, a North American author, uh, describes a, um, an art expert who's um, given a, uh, auth or tries to authenticate a, a kuros, which is a Greek statue 4,000 years old. And in about 15 seconds, he says it's a fake, even though the Getty Museum has paid 10 million pounds for it. And it is that sort of intuitive uh, fingertip feeling that you get when you know something is right. And you'll get that when you see the right school and the ethos and their values resonate with your values and what you want to have your children um, being educated in, those sort of things. I would just also stress, focus your time here because it is exhausting. And if you just wander up and down the aisles randomly talking to schools, you will quite quickly get school exhaustion. So, so what you need to do is, is really make a list of who you want to see and then spread it out through the day. Do, do, do two or three and then go to a talk or go and have a coffee or, or get something to eat. Then do a few more and then stop, chat, reflect, think, have we got it right? Should we open it up a bit? Are we seeing enough of the right kind of schools? Really f focus and use, use the guides to help you do that. Wandering up and down the aisles is a sure way to get very bored very quickly.
And just make sure you go to Seven Oaks and Stowe, because that will keep our admissions teams really happy. Isn't that right, Jesse? Okay, great. And, on, 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 and this is a, a triumph. We're actually going to finish early. So off you go. <laughs> Thanks very much.